Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Demonologist UK live stream going out on the podcast, going out on YouTube. So much to get through this week. As you can see, I've got my special guests in the background. Mute them in the minute because I've got a couple of bits I've got to announce at the beginning. Don't forget, right, right now, we have um, the Festival of the Unexplained. So, what I want you guys to do is when you finish on this stream i want you to head over to there and i want you to check that out um official official sponsor i think they're still selling tickets as well don't forget to check out the youtube channel we uh we're now live on youtube um just search the demonologist in the search bar um i'm trying to aim for 100 subscribers so i can actually change it so i can get a proper url but we'll see what happens um massive shout out to everyone locked in locked on got a load locked on tonight um, yeah, tonight we've got Out There Paranormal, Norfolk. Um, we've got Nigel Higgins, we've got Juliet Smith, who you'll hear me call her Jules. Um, that's how she likes to be called. Um, I'm going to unmute them so they can come live. Um, how are you doing, guys? Welcome along to the show. Hi, thank you for having us on. No, it's great. It's great to have you on. We are just having a chat beforehand there, so I've got a feeling this is going to be like quite a good show, you know, and so I'm really, really looking forward to it. But first of all, let's just shout out to everyone locked in. Um, we've got Claire, Darren, Alan, uh, we've got Emma, um, Paul, and we've got, yeah, there's loads. Wow. I'm looking Hello, forward to it. Hello, Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so out there, paranormal. How did you guys get started? What actually got you interested? Start with you, Jules. What got you interested into the paranormal? How did it all sort of come about? Okay, basically, I, well, as long as I can remember, since I was about five years old, I've had paranormal experiences. Yeah. Uh, I was brought up in an old farmhouse, um, which was known to be haunted when we moved in. The locals said, actually to my dad at the time, whatever you do, don't buy it, uh, because there'd been poltergeist activity and things like that happening in there. But it was actually quite a good energy, I found out. Um, and, you know, as we all know, um, children, because they're innocent in, in mind and thought, they can pick up on spirit. Mm -hmm. And it just continued. It continued to grow, um, you know, so I've got a fascination in paranormal, UFOs, cryptozoology and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't actually really start getting and developing my skills until I was probably in my 30s was when oh, okay. it started to get really, really strong. And that's mm -hmm. when I really started to develop and, and take an interest. And that's and I met Nigel. Right. We started chatting on Facebook, didn't we? We did indeed, That's yeah. Long, how long was that? What, 11 years ago now? What to be, yeah. God. So about a good <laughs> years ago, we were chatting. Yeah. And um, I went along, because I was interested, as I said, in UFOs, and I went along to a Euphoria meeting that Nigel suggested. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, do you want to come out with a group and just experience what it's like? And they were impressed with me. They liked what I did. And, you know, it wasn't long after that that they asked me to join as a team member. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mm. Mm. All started with Nigel. All started with you. How did you start the uh, Out There Paranormal? The Out There Paranormal group. Okay, right. I belong to another group um, investigating the Great Yarmouth. They're called Great Yarmouth Paranormal Investigators. Mm -hmm. And um, we fell out. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, that's always the way. Paranormal <laughs> differences, I think they call yeah. it. And so me and Alison, who uh, are in the group together, she's one of our other team members, we decided mm -hmm. to form our own group. Mm. And that's how we started. We just started with me and Ali, uh, and we got another girl, Tracy, on board, and another guy, Phil, who's um, sadly left us now. And oh. we just started investigating, you know, out and about, doing bits and pieces, going to local sites, and it grew from there. Mm. Uh, it thoroughly enjoyed it. We started properly investigating in about 2008. Wow, so you've been going a long time. That's been like about a long, it's been about a while, yeah. yeah. But I've been actively sort of researching and doing paranormal stuff since about 2005. Oh, okay. Uh, lot, yeah, I was interested in it before that. Um, I've always been interested in the sort of the strange, unusual, unexplained stuff, things like that. So, yeah, it's just been a natural sort of progression to go on from that. Wow. Well, you know, I was going to say, you said you fell out. There's no, that, to be honest with you, we, everyone plugs this whole para unity thing, but it never seems to work because, unfortunately, in the field that we're in, everyone's got an opinion on something and no one ever seems to agree with it. No. That's so true. That's very true. And starting out there paranormal in Norfolk, I mean, you could have uh, you couldn't have asked for a better place to get your locations, your oh, local locations. 
I mean, you've got, you've got, like J Jules was saying, you've got Castle Acar, you've got Raynham Hall and the Grey Lady. I mean, uh, what's the other one? Grimes Graves is another one. That's where the old uh, limestone mine place is. Yeah. I mean, I've been investigated there, and it's it's amazing. It's amazing because when I was when I was investigating, I was with Truth Paranormal. We had all the um, I can't remember what they're called now, but it's like the green sites. You know, the sites that the the council won't let you go into. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, we used to do like Dover Castle. We done Grand Grave. You know, we done places like that. Um, uh, Chiselhurst Caves as well, which is really really good. Um, but Norfolk, highly highly. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, I mean, I've got family up there. It's 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 a very haunted county. Not people there. I mean, we've we've got, you know, we've got all the beaches. We've got mm -hmm. Black Shuck Legend. We've got obviously we've got Matthew Hopkins, the Witch Hunter General, and all the witch trials. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So there is quite a lot. I mean, the Norwich Cathedral, for example, there was a witch burned in the grounds there, burned alive. Yeah, I remember hearing the story about that. I mean, um. That was like the whole. It's all right, Nigel. Mate, needs to go toilet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to go when nature calls. You got to answer. No, I'm taking my daughter. It's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, I was saying like um, I remember reading into that whole uh, Norwich Cathedral story, and it was the same thing as that they had at Salem. It was the mass hysteria problem. Yeah. And I'm just, I've literally just uh, closed a chapter on my book. I just finished writing the chapter on my book about Salem. And I did mention, obviously, in the UK, mm. there was a lot of stuff to do with like, the mass hysteria and witches and that. And in, it, it, it's cool. It's really good when you actually find these facts and these, and like you said about the woman getting burned. I mean, she was only burned because she was found to be innocent. They used yeah. to dunk you if you was guilty. And it's yeah. like, wow, I mean, what so with your investigations obviously nigel you've been going a long time what is yeah. your favorite place that you've investigated so far yeah um you know what it's one of our most recent ones and this is the weirdest thing because we've been to lots of different places but the yeah. best one we've actually been to where we've had such an amazing experience was the old air base at d from green the old oh. RAF station there yeah i've heard of that there is nothing there it's just fields with bits of runway mm. um we went Jules, when you explain your side of it, babe, and then um, I'll sort of go on to the, the other bit of it. What actually happened with you was why you went there. Yeah, come and well, hit us with this one. <laughs> Getting comfortable. See, I, was, I was hanging out with some of my friends. I went over to one of my friends for some food, and we were just chilling out. And he said, oh, you know, we know you're a paranormal investigator. You know, we'd love to do it with you. We'd, can you take us out? And I was thinking, what, now? You yeah. know, and they were like, yeah, yeah, now. You know, we'll drop you off at your house because I'd had a glass of wine. They're like, we'll drop you off at your house, get your kit, let's go. I was like, okay, we'll do this. So not expecting to find anything at all. And we got there, and as Nigel said, nothing at all. But yeah. the kit was going wild. I was picking up on stuff. I picked up on, you know, a top gunner called Steve. I mean, it was kicking off. And I thought, geez, we've got to come back here. Top gunner? I was expecting you to turn around and say it was like Maverick or Ice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, the plane there of Flying Fortress Bombers, and he was um, yeah. top gun turret guy, flight engineer, top gunner, top gunner. Yeah. Turret yeah. Gun. So that's what you're that one. It's amazing. It's and really uh, you, your research, I mean, after we did the investigation, confirmed everything that I'd picked up on, which is, it's lovely for me because when we do investigations and myself and Tracy, our other psychic in the team, when we pick up on things, it's great when you know um Alison and Nigel go away and then they come back and confirm yeah. you know what we're doing did yeah. exist did actually happen I mean I love that and this guy I mean what did you say to me there was two Steves stationed on the whole base at that time there's two Steves yeah and, and it's you know, the name now isn't it yeah. you wouldn't think it it's crazy it's crazy you, you got the right guy as well you actually said what he did you got his job you said he's an engineer what well, he's an engineer does he fix the planes and then you said no i can see him with guns as well that's really weird what's going on he yeah. had a dual job flight a flight engineer top turret gunner oh. and we actually found him in the records and we found the plane he went down on as well which is really that's, that's really good crazy. yeah I mean, and it's nice and refreshing to hear a team that go to an go to an investigation without any prior knowledge oh yeah 
do their psychic readings, get their scientific evidence, and then come away and then research. Don't get me wrong, I had a team on last week who um, some of them done their research before they went on well, investigation, which I understand. Some people like to do that. They like to be prepared. Um, yeah. In my opinion, I prefer doing it afterwards when I used to do investigations because of the pure fact of um, auto-suggestion comes into play. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. And also people, you know, if you do pre-research as well, me, mm. you know, and you, obviously, Damon, you know, being psychic as well, people can say, well, you've read it. You know about it. So what's the mm. point of even bothering to investigate it? You know, you're not picking anything up. No, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I wouldn't really class myself as a psychic anymore. That 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 I mean, I could still do it, but that boat sailed a long time ago when I started doing my research and finding things out that I found out. But yeah, I can understand what you're saying. Like, if you're picking up on things when you're at an investigation, yes. and then you go and do that research, and it I mean a lot of people will go, "Oh, I'm going to do some research." They'll tap it into Google and they'll look at the top search and they'll go, "Oh, nothing's come up." So obviously, you're wrong. You know, you've got to go that. You've got to go that further. I mean, people I rely on the internet. You can you can get so much more information out of books. Yeah, I'm that's, a book guy. that's exactly what Nigel does. Yeah, I'm a book guy. Even, I mean, even when I'm at work, I've got my audio books going on Audible, and I'm, there's a really interesting book that I'm reading at the moment by Gerard, uh, um, I can't remember what his name is, but it's called uh, Demons, Demonology, and Conspiracy. Like, it's really, really good. I'll have to send it over to you guys. It's worth a read, especially if you're into that sort of demonology stuff. It's sort of, uh, yeah, it's really, really good. But this is what I tell people. When you do your research, go and read a book. The internet yeah. is great. It it's brought us all closer together. It's allowed me to talk to you guys tonight for you guys to give your information out, for me to give my information out. But for your research, go and pick up a book. Yeah. It's the information in there is, is unfathomable. You can you can literally you'll read stuff in there that's unbelievable that you won't find on the internet. So that's my side of things anyway. But when you were saying about investigating um the airfield, I I my team done one. We done um, it's in Bury St Edmunds, Ruffham Airfield, Ruffham Control Tower. Yes, yeah. where the Memphis Bell was based. Yeah. Um, and my partner at the time, we just we just started seeing each other, and we um, we she come with us, and that's where she had her first experience, and she saw a gunner floating across the field, and that's her first experience. So it's quite. What um, I'm trying to get at, it's very synchro. It's, like we're sort of, it's sort of synchronicity. A lot of people don't believe me that it exists, but it's synchronicity. You talk about that, you know, it, it all sort of syncs up. So, yeah. I mean, I want to get you guys' takes on when you go out investigating. Let's start with you, Nigel. Do you go there with certain equipment? Is there sort of certain equipment that you rely on, or is it more, you know, feelings and emotion? Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Um, I'm going to buck your trend here because I know you don't like to research beforehand. I yeah. always do. Okay. I never tell the psychics where we're going. I never tell the psychics what I found out. Right. I can be prepared because I want to know what's the likelihood of me finding things there so I can run experiments that then go alongside what I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, recently, we did, uh, as an example, we did an investigation at Borough Castle, which is a Roman, an old Roman fort in Norfolk. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, right, we'll do some Singapore theory stuff where we'll play some sort of sounds and things and see if we could actually get some response. No. So I recorded some Latin speaking, mm -hmm. learned some Latin phrases, yeah. and I also recorded um, an Anglo-Saxon voice reading the, the Epic of Beowulf because it was taken over by the Saxons afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. We played that as Singapore theory. So it's things that we do like that. We go prepared with experiments that we want to run. Yeah, your standard kit that you would use. We're, we're going to go armed with um, EMF meters and stuff like that, just so we can sort of read background fields and see if there's anything going on. Um, but we try to run different little things as well. We'll do calling out in different ways. We'll take different little bits of trigger objects to try and get people interested. So if we're looking at a medieval site, for instance, we've got like medieval crosses. I've got some old medieval coins, things like that that we can lay about and hopefully attract them. Wow. We did some control towers, another good example. Um, yeah. We were digging about and we found a radio valve in another room. Oh, okay. We went into the communications room. We put this radio valve down as one of our trigger objects. Mm -hmm. We were calling out for this guy to actually contact us. And the spirit in there was pinging the valve, the actual valve that we put down. Yeah. It was actually pinging on the thing and you can actually hear it doing it, pinging on the glass. Wow. It was the only thing on the table that it recognised as something that it knew because it was a valve from a radio set from World War II. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's been 
mind blowing. Is is this is what I mean when you say? I know I say about doing your research afterwards, but like you said, you do your research before, but you keep it to yourself. So the other team, there's right, no yeah. suggestion for the other teams. That's what I was trying to get. Yeah, at. yeah you're right. Like and, know beforehand. Don't yeah. tell yourself. Yeah, definitely. and because you do that preparation, you're able to put these experiments in place, which increase the chance of you getting paranormal phenomena. Yeah, being able to put equipment in certain places ready to capture the phenomena, like you said, Saxon voices. I would say though, know, um, a lot of the Romans pre Jesus used to speak Aramaic, but I don't know if you're actually going to get any sort of Aramaic. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not on Latin, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um I was, I was i was i've got an idea for you nigel for, to to put jewels in the hot seat on your next investigation oh, make her make her do the uh the asti experiment have you heard of the asti experiment is that the one where you actually blindfold them and put earphones on them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. i want to do that i don't want to do it wouldn't you? yeah we'll definitely do it try it i've got i've got a few teams trying this asti theory i've got this this theory behind it that is it, it it rules out, it sort of puts everything on a level playing field because you can't see, because you can't hear, and you've literally only got that SB7 going in your ear, especially yeah. with the psychic doing it as well, being able to transluce their energy out into the atmosphere. Mm. I do believe that, I mean, I've had a lot of feedback saying that they get some extreme results with it and they're spot on. So maybe that's something you can do when COVID excuse my French fucks off, we can all actually go out and do what we no, want we to do. We can't wait. <laughs> so, yeah. We've got so many sites we've got lined up to do. It's just bloody yeah. nightmare. So do you sort of like, do you guys, Jules, do you guys just sort of stay around Norfolk area or do you branch out a little bit? I would love to branch out, but the problem is I think it's parental responsibilities that are slightly restrictive with mm. us. Um, but I'm very keen. I mean, I could branch out, um, you know, with pre-warning and, and, and stuff like that, because there's so many other places I want to do. Yeah. I, I have the opportunity to do the Ancient Ram Inn, which is obviously a very notorious one, but I turned I've, I've it I've been there. That that I, is an amazing yeah. place. There's a really cool story with the ramming. There's a really really cool story that supposedly, if you, uh, I mean Ben's probably the best person to back me up on this. He's a good friend of mine, and he's like yeah. he's an, he's an occultologist. Um, if you say a certain incantation, Merlin's legs are supposed to appear in the uh, fireplace. Yes, I've heard that. Mm. <laughs> it's like, wow, how do you know that's Merlin's legs? That could be anybody's legs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just going to quickly go through the listeners we've got in. Um, out to Darren, he's saying, Hi, Damon, Nigel, and Juliet. This setup you have here is great with the split screen, very good and clever considering COVID restrictions. I mean, welcome along, Darren. He's a new listener. It's Hi, good Darren. to have you. Um, out to Claire. Claire was saying that she's done one of them experiments and got some really, really good, uh, really yeah. good thing. Um, Kathy, they're talking about they're going to Kelverdon, which is down the road from us. I mean, that's a if you're going to branch out, it's definitely a place to go. Yeah, nuke the bunker. Me and my partner, it's probably one of our favorite investigations. We went, we done the bunker. I mean, I was the dude that had to go and put the camera at the end of the tunnel <laughs> by myself. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll give you all the big hard man on the screen, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. There's a little. Did you bit... run? Did you run? <laughs> I, don't, I don't ever run. The only thing that runs on me is my nose. That is literally. Oh, it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a paranormal investigation team, um, we do this thing, right? I've, I mean, I've got to stick it up the banner. We do this thing called the perspective, right? So yeah. it's getting your perspective from a listener's question. Now, Kathy Adams, one of the um, regulars to my show, she asked if I could ask you, um, what's your take on mobile app software in the paranormal? So I'm going to ask Nigel first, and we're going to come to you, Jules. But Nigel, what, what's your take on? And Joe, you know what? Be be brutally honest. Be you know as as, as brutally honest as you can be, because I don't mind on the show i'd rather you be truthful okay um my take on paranormal apps i actually really want to run an experiment using them yeah. just to have a look at them the problem i have with them is um it's for the unknown quantity of mobile phones what are they actually doing especially these ones where um they're saying voices you're getting words coming out of them yeah things have got microphones built into them they've got small memories they've got apps in there that could then be taking words that you're saying putting them in and throwing them back out here or associating words with it yeah so you get those back so to me yeah it's lovely that 
they're there and that people are using them and they think they're great, but I'm not so sure about them. The only one I'm really interested in is an app called Sensor Lab, which actually uses all the sensors on your phone to give you environmental readings from around you. So it's not like going to things, but it's letting you know whether the temperature has changed, whether the humidity has changed, whether the air pressure has changed, all that kind of stuff, which to me is more interesting because that's the kind of stuff I'd be looking for anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'd still rely on the fact that we'd be using things like um, our psychic medium listening for people calling out. And we do use spirit boxes, although we sort of do sort of use them with a bit of, mm, you know, maybe because yeah. probably apathena, which is your ears picking up random, picking up shapes in random patterns like your eyes do. Your ears do the same with noises. Yeah. You could be hearing something and wanting to hear, but it's not actually really there. Mm -hmm. Mobile phone apps, yeah, great, but I'd like to know an awful lot more about them because they're just you see so many teams using them with no sort of explanation or anything like that. And a word will come up and they can fit it into what they want, but it doesn't fit in with what actually is going on. And then yeah. they're led off down a path. Oh, yeah. that, that just said skeleton. Oh, that's just said ghost. Oh, that's just said this. Oh, that's, and then they're following what the box is saying or what the, the app is saying rather than actually using their own initiative and using their own sort of common sense and their own open minds actually look and see what they're doing. Mm. So, yeah, use them by all means, but use them with caution and use them for what they're intended. Yeah, no, I, I agree. You know. Mm, yeah, I agree. You talk, talking about the theory of stomata, like the psychological theory that the mind hears what it chooses to hear. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Jules, what's your take on, on, on phone apps? Have you ever used them? Do you find them I useful? Have, I have indeed. I actually, the first time, Mr. Higgins, I recall as I downloaded one, you laughed at me. <laughs> it was one i think it was one of the older older ones i think ghost radar ghost radar yes God. Yeah. <laughs> that one? and that's why he laughed at me and i think i would have done the same i'm not gonna lie <laughs> I, you see i saw it i saw it in in the app store and i thought oh what's this let's try this out and yeah. as we go and you know it, it is designed for a bit of fun it, it's not serious mm. a serious investigation tool but now you know as, as Nigel has said some of them that have come out you know recently I think they're worth looking at because they do see and the phones now do so much stuff they you know, do there's a, tech, there's a lot of tech in there so why not use them for paranormal investigation like they give them a go and see what happens you know run a few up and test them that's the well, way yeah. I think that's the only way to do it, isn't it? Is is just yeah. really you test and draw conclusions from the tests that you do. It's either yeah. going to be very, very good or it's going to be crap. I mean, it's going to be one way or another, isn't it? That's it. Mm. What do you think, David? Are you sort of in this sort of don't like him camp? <sighs> the problem with me is it causes more aggro than it's worth. Yeah. Because opening a line of communication with the spirit side. I mean, you know yourself, if you're not protected properly, even yeah. doing something as calling out can be, can get you an attachment um, of any kind. I believe that these apps produce a lot of false negatives. And I believe that phones are intended to text, to call, and they're not intended to speak to people on the other side. <laughs> you know? I agree, yeah. actually. Yeah. But... On the other hand, I had a case last year where um, actually Ben sent me the text messages over where a demonic entity was using a phone to abuse the person that it was trying to possess. Oh, wow. And that was a bit of an eye-opener. Yeah. I mean, guys, if you're liking what you're watching, check out the link below, facebook.com, out there, paranormal. Check these guys out. Honestly, watch their live streams. Hilarious, brilliant. <laughs> you guys crack me up. Yeah, I mean, see, I'm I'm very old school when it comes. If if I was to go out investigating now, I haven't been out for what nine years. Um, yeah. if I was to go out investigating now, I'm very old school. I like my trifield meters. I like addictor phone. I like things that I know that can't produce anything from nowhere. Um, what's the? Yeah. Oh, Joe, you know I'm so not up with all the tech now. But um, what's the the box? that generates random words oh what's it called oh obvious Not obvious don't like oh, it yeah. don't like it i think it's terrible i mean it's, it's taking random words from a word bank and it's throwing it out there and th that's when your mind see because i i i got a postgraduate in psychology as well so i know sort of how the mind sort of 
picks up these things and fits the theories yeah. to form facts instead of yeah. taking facts to form theories. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's just one of them things, but it's good to know that you guys are doing the right thing when you're out there. You're putting these things to the test. This is what I say to people. Put these things to the test. Don't just take them on face value. Don't just go, oh, the app says that it's going to find me a ghost, so I'm going to turn it on, and then there's going to be a spectre standing there waving ready for a high five. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, but I want to talk to Jules about her psychic mediumship. I've had a fair few psychic mediums on my show now. Yeah. And I always ask him the same question. I mean, how does being a psychic medium help you as an investigator? Mm. It certainly helps me tune in, um, obviously, to spirit and things like that. Um, the other side of it is I'm um, a spiritual empath as well. So I have to be a little bit careful with that because I can really sense emotions of spirit. Ah, okay. I mean, I've heard the, 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 the I've heard empath a lot. I know what it is, but for the people out there that are not up to date with all these new terms, can you just explain what a spiritual empath is for them, please? An empath, um, forget the spiritual side. An empath generally is somebody that can sense emotions from other people. Mm. Um, so, you know, if you're in a, a group of people, um, I can pick up on emotions of people that are standing very close by to me. And, you know, emotionally, that can be a challenge because you're dealing with your own emotions and you suddenly feel either deep sadness or deep happiness within. And you're like, well, where is this coming from? And yeah. It's quite a while to actually figure out what the heck it was. Um, mm. To get it from spirit as well um you know when i started working with spirit i'd, I'd sense that very deep connection of happiness and sadness yeah you know i don't work i don't allow spirit to work through me anymore i just work now as a psychic although i do have the ability to be a psychic medium but I, I did get an attachment i had a situation where i was foolish i got too close and i had to be cleared so that kind of kind of made me think. Uh, that was quite a few years ago now, and kind of made me think about you know being careful and always making sure that you protect yourself completely. And I can't stress that enough, guys. If you're going into this, and you know you can, you do sense spirit. Please, please, please learn protection before you do anything at all with spirit. It's really important. Yeah, like I say to people out there, you know. <laughs> You wouldn't go to sleep with your door open. No. You lock your door before you go to sleep. So it's the same thing with spiritualists and when you're investigating as an investigator. Because don't forget, you don't have to be a psychic or, I mean, you can be a complete skeptic, but at the same time, protection is is something that everybody needs. Yeah. I mean, Nigel, you've been doing this now for a long time, probably about the same amount of time as me. I mean, protection is a major part of it, isn't it? It's vital. Yeah. Mm -hmm yeah we have on occasions gone out and um we protected ourselves when we got there but we've we've gone home in such an excitement that things have happened that we've forgotten to clear ourselves when we've gone home and things have come home with us yeah, yeah. we did it at a from didn't we jules we did we had, I had steve steve came home with me yeah and like, like i say to people they're not pets you don't feed them three times a day and they sort of you know go and lay in bed all day and then wake up at the night time they're, they're not like that <laughs> you know these are intelligent entities that are able to manipulate the atmosphere they're able to manipulate electromagnetic frequencies to make themselves known you know protection is a massive thing i mean yeah. jules explain about your attachment what happened are you okay talking about it on air yeah fine um <laughs> I basically felt I had, well, it was very strange. It started off where I was getting scratches on my arm, um, yeah. a line, the mark of three going down my arm. Right, okay. We all know about the mark of three and what that's meant to symbolize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we're, what we're led to believe, but we won't get into that. <laughs> no, no I, I was quite concerned about that, you know, after yeah. looking into it and I thought, oh God, you know, and um, I went to see a mentor who was mentor, mentoring me at the time because I was quite new um, into getting into, you know, the psychic realm and, and learning what to do. And I'd, you know, I hadn't closed down properly. I'd been fooling around, trying different things. Yeah. And 
basically I started getting scratches appear. Um, I had like a wind around me. It was very, very cold. Right. Um, it was, it was, and I had within me, I had these, I felt angry and, and deep sadness all the time. And I, I thought, where is this coming from? Because I'm usually generally a very calm, very placid person. I don't have anger or, or rages, you know, it's not me. Yeah. Um, and I thought, am I, what the hell is it? Am I depressed? You know, is there something wrong? I went to the GP and they said, oh, you know, I think you need to be on antidepressants. We think you're depressed. Take time out. And I, I thought, I'm not depressed. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. And then I went to see my mentor and he said, I can see you've, you've got an attachment. He called, he called it auric attachment, attachment of the aura. And he described it to me like an umbilical cord attachment mm -hmm. between a mother and a child. And yeah. he said, this energy this entity is feeding off you and you know you're sensing how it's feeling yeah. and it was yeah it was it was quite a weird thing and he my mentor at the time um there was a, a lady a blind psychic from ireland who who came over and she cleared me and it took all day it was an interesting experience she sat me down in a chair and was you know we had calorie sage and all kinds of different things and she was walking oh, okay. around all day and i thought at times i thought this is a bit weird you know she having a bubble you know, <laughs> this all about, you know and but i have to say whether it was crap or not it worked it worked and it stopped mm. um so whether I don't know whether it was something going on psychologically in, in my head. You could argue that. Yeah, or, a lot of people will argue that as well, wouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. And a good question. I mean, I've studied psychology, you know, yes. Or whether it genuinely was something that attached me. But the physical scratching that I had stopped, yeah. which is interesting because I was getting, you know, the physical signs yeah. of it on and that that just completely stopped so but i certainly learned my lesson after that experience i have to say no i mean when you say about it was like she's having a bubble um i had a case last year um where um i spoke to a friend of mine uh, ben and he said look get some christmas medal and soak it in orange juice especially squeezed orange juice and i went what, what are you on about that ain't gonna work it worked really it yeah it worked but people don't realize in the olden days what they used to do is to heighten the protection on any sort of medallion or religious relic they would soak it for 10 to 12 minutes in freshly squeezed orange juice and i didn't know this and it's until, until someone tells you these things you don't know but it, it's crazy isn't it? it's, it's absolutely mental would they have had freshly squeezed orange juice like years ago? It, it's would they have been it years ago. We, we say freshly squeezed. It's any sort of citrusy sort of fruit. It can be lemon juice. Supposedly the citrus inside it. There's citrus acid that brings out the protection of the metal and heightens religious relics. I mean, I'm not religious anyway. I'm I'm a lay demonologist. I I tackle things with. I use religion as a provocation tool to confirm what's happening, but I'm not religious in any way, shape, or form. Even though I was raised Catholic, yeah. I don't use religion in any way, shape, or form. So it's mm. complete lay demonology, I mean. But um, yeah, someone asked a question. I, I pinned it, but it's bugged off. Uh, no, re uh, No. <laughs> <laughs> it was something about protection. Um, oh, yeah, it was Annette asked about what's the best protection to use. I mean, Nigel, we, I know. Juliet's gonna Jules is gonna talk we'll get her opinion on it next because I like to get to the to the listeners questions because that's what we do it for sure, no um, what do you use for protection and what's your best form of protection when you're out investigating me I use Juliet <laughs> <laughs> Jules, what do you use for protection when you're out? Jules, that's Jules department um I'm not I'm not psychic at all um mm -hmm. I understand some of the spiritual side of thing but I'm I'm a historian I'm a researcher I'm a scientist um, my speciality is human belief systems. I've got a degree in that. So yeah. um, I rely on Juliet for the spiritual side of things. I wouldn't have a clue what I was doing. So I'd rather rely on someone who knows what they're doing. So whatever Jules tells me or whatever Jules does with us is what works for us. So that's more her department than mine. But I just do whatever she tells me to do. And yeah, it doesn't doesn't involve much. You know, it's a sort of form in a circle and 
saying a prayer and you know calling on various sort of spirits and things to sort of guide us and help us and protect us oh like the archangels and stuff like that that's it you've got it yeah Yeah. you know but that's but that's jules's department and then at the end of it we sort of finish off and say you know please anybody if you're here stay here don't come home with us you know this is where you belong that kind of stuff and Mm. but yeah but we always do every single time we always do it if it's not uh, jules doing it it'll be tracy doing it and tracy's very religious um, yeah. So it does a sort of more elaborate ceremony, but yeah, we always have someone, one of the spiritualists or one of the one of the psychics doing our protection for us because yeah, no, they know great. what we're doing. Yeah, no, it's, it's great that you guys do that. I mean, um, I've I've heard people calling on archangels. I've heard people calling on a big white light, crystal domes. You know, the light going out at the end of your fingers, the tree roots in the floor to ground yourself. Yeah. I, I remember doing all that sort of thing. Um, my uh oh sorry gary asked gary hughes asked is there anything you can carry on yourself to protect yourself i mean jules you can answer that one i tend to carry uh quartz with me rose um clear quartz with me yeah for Uh, absorption as a a psychic as well i work with a stone called lapis lazuli which not everybody gets on with because that's quite a powerful stone to enable you to tune in into is that the blue one is that the blue stone yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, people, some people that have used it do go away with migraines and and quite bad headaches you've got to be quite careful how you use that stone mm-hmm. um, but i'd say clear quartz uh definitely is a very good starting point as well mm-hmm. and as i said carry that with you and always do uh protection before you not within a premises but before you enter the premises yep. for your protection then you go in and remember when you come out before you get in your car and before you leave and you're at that location close down and finish off your protection so you don't take anything home with you mm. it's funny you mentioned lapis lazuli i was doing some um research the other day uh, for my book for into ancient egyptian diades which they they that's that's their form of a demon but a good and a bad demon and mm. um, a lot of the ancient pharaohs used to have lapis lazuli in their bracelets yeah. for protection yeah. They did. I mean, I've actually, I was lucky enough many years ago to go to Egypt and there's some artifacts in the museum, in the Egyptian museum. I mean, obviously nobody can go anywhere at the moment, but when it's safe to do so and when Egypt as a country is a little bit safer and more stable, then yeah, fascinating place to go to really well. Yeah. Done. When you get into the Egyptian deities and the gods that they had, I mean, you are there for days. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. i love history history is my thing yeah, I, I love it, it. It's, it's cool it's cool um but also for the guys out there i'm going to add to what uh jules was saying um if you can get hold of it a great protection tool for when you're out investigating um from my research is uh black sea salt blessed yes. black sea salt of course yes mm. Mm. i mean that's what i used to carry on with me and i use i'll show you guys actually I use this little thingy. I don't know if you can see it. What is it? Is it some? I can't yeah. see what is it. No, that is. It's just a cross. Even though I'm not religious. Really, it's a cross with the circle of life around it. Yeah, okay. Nigel's got one too. And these two little things here. I've just got a mermaid. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> well, these two little things here are really special. These are these are transportation devices for demonic entities. I got, I got given, yeah i got given one of them when i passed my um degree in demonology it's, so it's what, empty at the moment oh, what are these about because i'm not familiar with this so they they run along the same sort of lines as um what you guys would know is a dibbit box but in the demonology where we call them transportation boxes they normally have the solomon seals on them depending on what uh demons you're going to tackle they run on the same sort of things on the inside of my the left hand ring is um a seal that seals the demon inside it the other one is just a bad entity that i come across that i managed to seal in that so it's almost like a that's the one on the right is more of a haunted object but the one on the left is for when i do eventually come across <laughs> something that's really bad that is going in there so but i always carry it on me anyway and um that was uh that cross was blessed by an archbishop as well so it, it's got it's got a lot of power to it yeah. I mean, we had some stuff happening in the house when I first met my partner to one um, to one of my daughters, and um, I gave her the necklace, and it helped her. So it helps me now. What I'm doing, what I'm doing now. So, I mean, it could be anything. I mean, Darren Shaw saying mermaids may be real worth investigating, like mer people. That's something that I'll 
Yeah. <laughs> right now, now. Now. <laughs> I've got enough to research. This is crazy stuff. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Claire H. Louise is asking, does it depend on the person's health if they are vulnerable? It can do, yes. Mm. Well, do you answer this one? Well, no, it's, it's more your de your department, isn't it, than mine. But if you're um, if you're not mentally strong, um, mm. then they can get in. That's the problem you find with it when when spirits or things are trying to possess you. Yeah. If, you if your willpower and your mental sort of ability is low, then they can get in. You often find that people that are depressed or feeling low or anything like that, then so that's when they can strike. So yes, it does. Um, I'm not so sure about physical health, mind you, but I think if you're mentally strong, then you don't have a problem. Yeah. But if you if you are sort of at a low point or feeling a bit low or just you know not in your best place, then yeah, can cause you problems. Did you say that's right? I've pulled up. I want to introduce everybody to my new little friend. Now, this is someone that I've brought along for the show tonight. You're this introducing is... someone to your new little friend. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is this is something this is new to the show that I've brought along to the show. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is Derek, everybody. It's oh, D E R E Q. Stands for Devilishly Entertaining Randomization Entertaining Questioner. Right. Okay. I thought all this myself, by the way. <laughs> and what I've done is I have pro I have programmed Derek with over, I think there's 497 questions inside Derek's brain. Oh, God. Right? And when I hit a button on my keyboard, it's going to come up with a completely random question. It could be anything. It's based on the paranormal. It's not going to ask you what shoe size you are, what blood type you are, or if I can have your bank details. It's not going to do that, right? <laughs> but this is he's, he's going to come up with a completely random question. What we're going to do is we're going to go to each one of our guests tonight, and okay. we're going to get their take, right? So we're going to call this part of the show. I like to call this part of the show. It's called On The Spot because that's what we're doing. We're putting you guys on the spot. <laughs> so <laughs> let's go back to our good old Derek and let's go with Jules first. Let's see what question comes up for Jules. Why is it going to be me first? Well, you, <laughs> don't have to first. you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, God, that's a good one to start with. Jules, what's your view on black eye children? Oh, uh, um, I think they're aliens. That's my personal view on it. Mm. I think they're alien entities. I don't think they're of this world. I don't think they're paranormal. But mm. some people do believe they are. Some people believe there is uh, demonic entities attached to them as well. But I personally think they are um, alien beings. That's my view. Brilliant. Brilliant. I mean, I, aliens have been coming up a lot in my life at the moment. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I only found out the other day in 2018, the American government actually released um, files based under the Freedom of Speech Act that aliens do actually exist and that the um, Collins elite does exist and they do try to link demons to extraterrestrials. I didn't know that. And it's crazy that when we ask you about black eyed children, Jules, that you actually talk about aliens. Cause I think that not only is my perspective, but it's also my partner's perspective as well. Cause she just looked at me and gave me a nod. So yeah, definitely. Right. <laughs> so see that guys, Derek can come up with anything. So let's just, we're going to move on to Nigel now, Nigel, we're going to get your take or your question. So let's go. Derek hit us up. Right, that's a complete typo. But do do spirits have types or classifications? Excuse my spelling, but yeah, Nigel, do spirits have types or classifications? Okay, are you talking spirits themselves or types of actual spiritual encounters like hauntings? Because no, it's all about spirits or ghosts themselves. Because we know ghosts and spirits are different things. Obviously, ghosts have no intelligence; spirits are intelligent. You've got but, you. Um, do spirits have different types and classifications with ghosts or spirits like entities that have different I would, I would go down to my view on spirits themselves is um there's two types there's good ones and there's bad ones so and the same as humanity if a uh, spirit is the soul of a deceased person yeah okay, if that deceased person happens to be a good person then they're going to carry on being that good in yeah. the afterlife so to speak so they're going to carry on being a good person 
But if that person's someone horrendous, like the Yorkshire Ripper or someone like that, where they've been a particularly nasty individual, yeah. when they cross over onto the other side, then they're going to be equally as bad over there. They're not going to change. They never changed in this life. Why would they change yeah. in that life? So you talk about demons and stuff like that. I often sort of think about sometimes generally evil spirits can be confused for demons as well because they're very, very close to each other. Yeah. That's the thing that I see. So, yeah, I think there are different types, but I would go down the route of the main two types that I think is just, it's basically good and bad, good and evil. You know, mm. that's exactly how human type is. It's you put them into two very simple brackets and that's what I look at. So that's my view on it anyway. No, I mean, brilliant view. Brilliant view. If you actually look at the overall classification of spirits, you do have good, you do have bad. I mean, you have people like um, Ed and Lorraine Warren that talk about crisis apparitions and this apparition that because they had a whole classification of obviously um, spirits in themselves. Um, I mean, I think the way you look at it is a lot easier, good and bad, you know, bad branches out to demonic, good branches out to angels, which we're going to come to in a minute. Um, and yeah, no, I think it's a great, I think it's a great point of view. And at the end of the day, it's, it's on the spot. It's your, your time to shine. It's your guys thing. So I'll put it down to listeners, man. What do you think? What do you think? So Derek, thank you very much. We're going to stop. Uh, we're going to take him off now. Cause he's, uh, that, that was a hard run out for him. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You wouldn't believe how long it took me to create that beast. I did, though. Smart. Yeah. I mean, I've, I mean, I put like, there's like, I'm, I'm still adding questions all the time. So, so based on Nigel's perspective of classifications of ghosts and spirits, I want to ask you guys with the paranormal we deal with spirits that are here and trapped in this world mm. do you believe in angels and demons and this is a question that i like to ask people because obviously this show is called the demonologist uk and we do talk about demons now and again now and again uh, <laughs> but i mean come to you to jules first do you believe in angels and demons yes i absolutely do yeah. i absolutely do i actually work um you can't in my opinion you can't have one without the other definitely uh, you know you've got to have good and you have to have evil and they balance each other out yeah so, i mean i work with angels myself there's a particular angel that i will always go to and i have to say i am not a religious person you know mm. i'm really not anyone that knows me would know i'm not a religious mm. person but i do believe in angels and demons and this particular angel has never ever let me down when i've had times in my life you know if I'm losing someone or anything like that, I will always call upon him um, for guidance or to, to help me, to help me yeah. find a way. And yeah. I've never, ever been let down. So, yes, I do. And with respect to the other side as well, we spoke about it earlier, and I believe that I have sensed demonic energy before. Yeah. And it's not like anything else that I have experienced. It's it's nothing like dealing with, you know, spirits and, and the paranormal. It's a whole different ball game. Um, so yes, my answer is absolutely I do. Uh Claire's asking, is that Michael that you're talking about? No, it's Gabriel. Oh I'm not gonna burst your bubble. <laughs> <laughs> i've heard rumors but i'm not going to burst the bubble when it comes to gabriel i'm going to let you yeah, that's fine. That. Yeah. I mean, nigel what's your take on angels and demons here we go <laughs> <laughs> because like you're, you're you're like me you're very scientific um you base things on what you see scientifically so i mean yeah. jules is very spiritual so it's easy for her to believe in angels and demons, whereas people like me and you who look at the science behind things, even though science, if you actually look at the definition of it, it's what the five senses can measure, right? And obviously the sixth sense that we use when we go out like, investigating. So I want to take, I want to get your side, angels and demons, what's your side of things? Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm agnostic, okay? So um, I do believe in the power of good and evil, but I don't believe in God. Uh, yeah. so I'm not an atheist, don't get me wrong. I don't sort of think, oh, there's nothing because there is something because the things that I've experienced make me realise that there is something to this. Yeah. After Past, there is something there angels and demons to me um has always been thrown into the religious side of things mm. and i'm very anti-religion 
that's the problem I've got. Faith, I don't have any problem with whatsoever. No. I believe people, if people have got faith, then that's great because then you believe in something that strongly. But I think religion is crass and religion is used as a tool to manipulate. Definitely. And that's what I don't like. So Definitely. for me, they fall into that category. It's always been, this is strange because you said this earlier on about talking about history and I'll go into this now and say, it was always the case of, Angels and demons are always a church thing, always a religious thing. You know, if you're going to be bad, you're going to you go into the fiery pit of hell and there's going to be demons that are going to come and tear you apart and all this kind of stuff. Or you're going yeah. to be by these angels that are going to sweep down and get you. So I can use it as a tool then to scare people to doing what they want. You can make yeah. the will of the people their own by scaring them with stuff like demons, hell, yeah. that sort of thing. But you were talking about Mesopotamia and the Sumerians, and I've read the Epic of Gigalmash. So I know what you're talking about yeah. <laughs> when it comes to this sort of thing. And there are in a lot of these ancient epics that aren't anything to do with Christianity or any of the, the major religions, the monotheistic, is that what I'm looking for? The ones that have got one God, um, yeah. Jewish faith, Christianity and um, Muslims. Yeah, monotheologian. That's the fellas, yeah. They're mm. more sort of the other religions like we're talking about ancient egyptian uh, mesopotamian greeks the romans they all have sort of more than one god for various different things yeah but their religions they've got demons they've got bad things they've got nasty stuff yeah and it's all in there okay and you only got to sort of read between the lines and realize what they're talking about although they're called different things they are there but they yeah. Got the other side of things where they've got things that do good and things that look after you as well so it's interesting that it's thrown into this sort of religious thing where we just put a label on them and say demons and angels but to yeah. me it's a lot deeper than that yeah it is. That. I, look, I look more into sort of okay i don't like the religious terminology that goes behind it but i do appreciate the fact that there are things there lurking in the darkness that we don't understand and there are things there that come down and save us in times of need yeah I'm going to give you an example now of something oh, that this is something Juliet done. Um, and whether or not you believe in these things, I don't know. But uh, whether you've sort of looked intently into what we do, um, I have cancer. I don't have cancer anymore because I've been declared clear. I was declared clear last year. But last year I went through chemotherapy and radiotherapy and I was really quite ill. Okay. I'm sitting in the box above me here, young yeah. Juliet said prayers for me. Oh, okay. All sorts of stuff, didn't you, babe? You called on your spirits, you everything she could possibly could to try and get me through it because you were really scared that I wasn't come through the other side of it. Yeah. Well, Gabriel, I hate to say. Yeah. yeah. I was given five years. This time last year, I was given five years to live. Yeah. And here I am. And oh. I'm and my treatment worked because somebody had that faith to do this sort of thing. So yeah. Is there a power there that helped me through that? I don't know. It could just be science and the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy that did the trick. Yeah, yeah. I'm dying and then I'm not. But because someone was there doing that, it's the power of positivity. I knew that she was there for me. I knew that she was backing me. I knew that she had this faith in me. So I got that faith in myself. And I think it's a massive healer. Believing in yourself and believing in positivity does help. Yeah, and that, and wow, what a story. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no answer. I'm speechless. <laughs> it's the first time ever. <laughs> well done, Nigel. You managed to silence me. I mean, that's something that my partner can't even do. So well done. <laughs> I mean, no, it's good to hear that everything's all clear now. And I mean, when it comes to things like that, you know, I believe in demons. If I believe in demons, I have to believe in angels. There's, there can't be no light about the dark. It's yin and yang. It's push and pull. Everything has its own opposite. And, you know, we so like I said science is explained from what can be measured for them five senses, but we all know from what we do there is a sixth sense, and no one knows the exact definition of what that sixth sense is, and that's why we go out and investigate, and that's why we go into the paranormal to find out what it is, you know. And just for the save like congratulations to you, Nigel. It's great to see you up and kicking. It's just a bit bad time because you've got over it and then COVID comes along. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh, we're <laughs> like, all right, Nigel, Nigel, like, it's great that you've got over it, but now stand doors, please. Exactly. Yeah, can't do anything. Yeah. No, no, you can have a party with yourself in the back garden, but apart from that, you know, there you go. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been a great show tonight. 
Um, we was discussing, I just want to quickly, because I've only got, I've got six minutes left. I just want to quickly go over a few things. I mean, you guys are out there paranormal. You do your live streams. Um, you do your investigations. Um, this part of the show is something that I've been told is completely disgusting, but, you know, it's, it's the big plug what I like to call the big plug. This is when I get you guys to tell everybody about what you're doing, give them all the websites, advertise the hell out of it. This is your chance to reach out to everybody that locks into the show and advertise the hell out of it. So I'm going to hand it over to you guys. Okay. Go. Oh, you throw it at me, why don't you? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know we're out there paranormal. Come and find us. We are on all the social media outlets. We are on... We have a very good YouTube channel with lots of our investigations on. We have an active Facebook group with lots of great people on as well. We're growing on Instagram. We have Twitter if you want to come and follow us on there. If you go to our Facebook group, there's a list of all the groups that we all the things that we have on social media. So come and join us there. Also, look out for soon to be on video direct through Amazon Prime because we're putting some of our investigations on there as well. We've got we've got a podcast channel too, oh, really? and we're putting more on that content on there as well. And I actively write blog posts to go on our website too. So we've got a blog on there that I put things on. There's currently one on there at the moment. I'm talking about very interesting we're talking about researching and um, finding out information it's about how groups don't research so the part two is going up there at the weekend you'll be able to see that Brilliant. we're very very serious about what we do um we do like to have a laugh and a joke but we're not just ghost hunters we're paranormal researchers and investigators we take what we do very very seriously indeed yeah. um, we do an awful lot of digging we do an awful lot of research we don't just go out for how can yeah. i put it unpleasantly shits and giggles we don't do that we're yeah. very serious about what we do we're very very serious about the paranormal and even though we're coming across as quite joking quite friendly and quite silly we're not okay come and give us a look because we're more than just ghost hunters Jules. Yeah. can i just add the truth is out there <laughs> that's some serious <laughs> x-files shit right there i ain't gonna lie <laughs> yeah. i need the theme tune i need the theme tune <laughs> 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 no, I, I agree with you guys, man. I, I you know what? I, I didn't know you guys done so much. It, it's great. It's great to see you guys doing that. I mean, you blogging as well, Nigel. Is there a book in the? Are you going to write a book about your experiences? I, I, do I don't honestly know whether I'm actually good enough to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I look, she'll, she'll, she'll give all this. Yeah, I'm going to shut up, you. Uh, <laughs> he is really, really good. He is. He he sent me some stuff, and it is really good. I used to write articles for magazines, and he is good. And he should do it. I keep telling him that, but he won't listen. It's one, of them things. it's one of them things. When you open that can. Yeah. Right. I'm going to write 500 pages. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get to 500. And you're like, I'm only halfway through the book. Oh, no. 600. Oh, my God. I mean, my books, I've been writing it now since like six, six months ago. And it's just getting bigger and bigger. And it's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Crazy. Mean. But you guys keep doing what you're doing. I can't stress enough, guys. I'm going to stick it out there again. Let's stick that link up there. Then. Thank Check you. Out, out there, Paranormal. All their social links are on their Facebook page. I've got it written at the bottom there. Go and check it out, or I swear to God, I will soft ban everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, honestly, guys, I mean, it's, it's been great having you on the show tonight. We're going to have to schedule another one. Definitely. Uh, I mean, I like to have people come on the show, get updates and stuff like that. I mean, Ben's been on about 90 different shows. Me and Ben are always on it. <laughs> but yeah i mean i'd love to have you guys on again um it's, it's it's been fun thank you very much we've been actually quite calm tonight as well haven't we, we behave ourselves haven't we Nige? <laughs> <laughs> which is rare for us <laughs> it's because we're not together that's why we're in yeah. separate places yeah <laughs> i mean i was warned nigel did say but uh, yeah i mean he said you'd be on your best behavior and i'm, I'm yeah i mean gold star to you both gold star to you both <laughs> i've also got ads on to there as well don't forget this video will be available on my youtube channel at the moment youtube's going off it's been great i mean it's, it's been a good night all in all we've had some really good point of views i want to get you guys back on especially to talk about what happened to you at castle Laker. um we're going to get into that um and some other bits uh and hopefully next time you come on the show derek will be a little bit more kinder to you guys <laughs> but anyway like guys i take care take care i'm gonna um i've got a couple of things to say at the end of the show what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take you off the stream and we look forward to seeing you another time but thank you again for coming along everybody out there paranormal
Thanks, Simon. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks. Cheers. Take care, guys. See you Bye. later. So, yeah, everybody, that's Out There Paranormal. Make sure you go over and check out their Facebook page. Now, I've got a couple of announcements to make. Next week's a big show. We've got Robbie Crosen on the show from Haunted Scotland. Make sure you check out, check, check out this one. And straight after you finish this stream, head over festival of the unexplained they've still got tickets available raising money for calm that's campaign against living miserably it's all for a good cause get yourselves over there it's going on all weekend make sure you check that one out also don't forget to check out the other official sponsors of the show that's npi uk and also check out journey of the spirit guys my my demos all the people that follow me out there, I need your help. Get over to the YouTube channel. Please, please, please like and subscribe. And also, if you can take five minutes out of your time just to leave a review on my channel on Facebook as well, it would be absolutely amazing. I am read every single one and I'll reply to every single one. Don't forget, if you've got any questions as well that you want to stick to me, any questions you want to ask any of the guests on the show, I am going to post a full lineup of everybody that I've got coming on over the coming months. Just hit me up on this below us. That is the demonologist at hotmail.com. And also head over to my Facebook page. Um, I am looking at doing... Um, I am looking at doing um, something for um, some, some listeners out there. Um, oh, God, my mind's gone blank. Um, I am looking at, like, adding an extra channel in where I talk about my book and the demonology side of things and talking about them sort of subjects, you know, sort of stuff about, like, Zozo and Lilith and stuff like that. So I am getting over and I'm going to do that. But it's in the works. You've got to bear with me. I'm a full-time dad. I'm a full-time worker. I'm a key worker. I'm just going to have the vaccine soon, hopefully. So, yeah. Well, I've been talking for long enough. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to Out There Paranormal. They've been absolutely amazing tonight. Don't forget to go over and check out their Facebook. Ah, And for now, you know, take care. And I'm out of here. Take care. Goodbye. Good night. And take it easy. Don't forget, it's all my demos out there. Keep it spooky. <laughs>